Well, first, I applaud those business leaders uh, from the New York area who came together and urged a peaceful transition of power. That is business using its voice in an appropriate fashion. But as I put out on Twitter this morning, we should have seen this coming. Indeed, we did see this coming. When President Trump tweeted, liberate Michigan, and then applauded, as did many of his enablers, armed people crashing into the Capitol building in Lansing, Michigan. What was that, if not an assault on democracy? What is it when a sitting president of the United States tells the Proud Boys to stand back and stand by, or when he describes QAnon in front of a massive television audience as patriots who don't like child pornography? This president has been inciting his followers for years. And what happened yesterday was the inevitable conclusion of that. We hope it is the conclusion. And so now it is incumbent upon everyone, business people, Republicans, cabinet officials, elected officials, to stand up and repudiate what is unacceptable. I'm glad that, uh, you know, Mark Zuckerberg did what he did. But honestly, what has happened on these social media platforms for the last several years is why a congressional inquiry and debate, including the industry, about what the rules are and should be, happens, and then these platforms are held accountable to keeping those rules. It can't just be up to Jack Dorsey and Mark Zuckerberg to decide one day what's okay and what's not. Carly, I think there's a couple things in what you just said. One, you're talking about business policy, technology policy, people speaking up. But then you also point out the, the road that led us here and what we've seen Donald Trump do over the last months and years. This morning, we had Mick Mulvaney on Squawk Box trying to make the case that Donald Trump has changed over the past eight months, that somehow there was this private Donald Trump that he saw that was different. Frankly, that sounds to me like the victim of abuse, talking about you don't know him like I know him, you don't see him at home. We have seen Donald Trump do various things and use incendiary rhetoric, I think of, of Charlottesville, uh, for years now. And I think uh, business, media, to, to a great extent, have normalized this. Uh, how do yes. politicians, how do businesses shift away from that, given that a, a very large percentage of the, com- uh, of the country voted for Donald Trump, a large percentage of the country believes what he has said uh, about uh, election fraud, which is completely baseless. Um, it, it, businesses still have to run. They have customers, yes. right? Yes. So first of all, I agree with everything you said. What is necessary is to begin to demand accountability and hold people to account. And I know it's difficult. This is why I stood up and said impeachment was vital way back in January of 2020, because it is a way of establishing accountability. Let me go all the way back to the business world for a moment. Remember Enron? Why did an Enron happen? Why does every business fraud happen? Because little by little, accountability is ignored. Little by little, things that we know shouldn't be happening are allowed to happen until at some point it all blows up in our face. In business, Ken Lay, Jeff Skilling, others were held to account because that's the only way you can restore faith in systems and integrity and rebuild. And so now we must restore faith in the integrity of our systems. And we cannot do that without holding people to account. Not just the president, of course. Not just those who stormed the Capitol building and need to be arrested, of course. But those as well who have been uh, enabling this behavior by uh, refusing to say anything when something clearly needed to be said. And that was the point of my tweet this morning. We all have to come together and say there are certain things that are unacceptable. And when they are unacceptable, we must hold people to account by speaking out, even when it's politically perilous or inconvenient or we receive criticism for doing so. And the same is true 
honestly, of these technology platforms. I'm sorry, I don't trust any individual. Mark Zuckerberg, Jack Dorsey, Sheryl Sandberg, I don't trust them to make the right decisions all the time. And so we need rules of the road that are debated, that are transparent, that are agreed upon, that we all understand. And then we need to hold platforms accountable for following those rules. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.